Hello colleagues who have joined us recently and thank you all for staying with us from the previous talk. It is a quality engineering community day 2023 that is conducted by Global Testing and ProQuality Community. We are happy to see all of you with us. I want to mention that our session is being recorded and the recording will be available in a week after the session. Don't hesitate to leave your question to our speakers in the YouTube chat and ProQuality Community page. The most interesting questions I will ask to our speakers this session. My name is Andrei Ivanov, and I will be your moderator till the end of this day on quality engineering stream. So, and our next speaker, Anton Lazarczyk, with a topic from data mass to actionable insight, a production case study. Hello, Anton. Yeah, hi, hi. Yeah, I know that you are located in Montenegro. What is the weather today? Is it sunny? Oh, uh, yeah, it's quite sunny now. And, uh, you know, like, or else, uh, I think in the summer mood already. But, uh, yeah, uh, pretty tired of the stormy weather and there are a lot of rains. But uh, now I think it will be really great to maybe <laughs> visit the coast and uh, just take my time here. There, yeah. But, yeah. The in general, what what is your favorite weather? Oh, uh, uh, pretty tough to say because uh, uh, you know, like everything uh, can be compared. And uh, previously, I, I I think I loved summer, <laughs> but <laughs> now when you have summer all year, uh, you are starting to. Um, to uh, when there's snow <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> really somewhere, because uh, uh, the last two winter uh, I haven't seen any of it, and it's pretty difficult to find it. You just need to maybe ride in their mountains and uh, have chains on your uh, tires just to climb there. It's pretty, um, pretty difficult, I say. And uh, uh, now I say that. Uh, I prefer winter, <laughs> but if I have winter most of the year, I would say that I prefer the summer. Yeah. Uh, do, do, do you like any, any winter activities? Yeah. Yeah. They're like, I, I think, two resorts so in the mountains. But uh, the main problem that you need to have a car and there are chains also that <laughs> we discussed. And it's quite risky just to visit it because uh, without their proper, I think, tires and equipment, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's, it's a pretty long road. I think around, around three hours, maybe just to, to ride there. So I uh, haven't oh. got the, um, an option or like uh, to visit it uh, this winter, but maybe uh, next season will be mine. Yeah. <laughs> it's just dream for me. Okay, let's go back to our topic and stage is yours. Please. Yeah. Yeah, great, great. So, uh 
I think we already started with a small introduction. So uh, I guess we j will j jump straight forward to their uh, presentation itself and to our agenda. And uh, I think to build a common understanding of their data quality testing and its necessity, we will start with the general theory uh, regarding data analytics to make some kind of their baseline. And then we will analyze the main components of the data quality testing process. And at the very end, we inspect the implementation of the DQ process on the specific project. So let's start. And we will start with the data itself, because any analytics should be done on something. And the amount of this something is growing extremely fast. Uh, there are no stopping data growth. And the best example of this ongoing explosion is the fact that roughly 1.7 megabytes of data is generated per second for every internet user in the world. Actually, we also now generating the data, their videos, commentaries on their our platform and other stuff. Uh, but uh, when we speaking about the data grows, what sizes we are talking about? And according to the forecast, the volume of the data generated, consumed, and stored will reach more than 180 uh, zettabytes by 2025. And there will be three times more than amount shown in 2020. Uh, and in fact, there are COVID pandemic rapidly increased the global data creation in 2020, as most of the world population had to work from home and use the internet for both work and the entertainment. So uh, it can be said that we have a lot of data and like uh, how we would get the value from it. Uh, and here it's, it's data analytics come into place and uh, it is important to understand trends, uh, trend, trends and patterns, plus help optimize business performance, uh, forecast future results, understand audiences, and reduce costs. Uh, and here we can see the four main time of the analytics, uh, descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, and prescriptive. And uh, yeah, we have like four different types, but uh, let's compare them by the type of the insights which we can achieve based on this on them and more actionable insights now is, is a priority many projects want to have not just descriptive analytics but also more sophisticated sophisticated analysis that gives actionable insights however it's difficult to perform it more difficult i would say and uh here is also the general pitfall that you, you might think that okay, let's keep the descriptive part and jump through their uh, just jump straight to their uh, action uh, to the actionable results to the prescriptive part. But uh, without good descriptive analytics, you won't be able to move to the more complex types. Uh, and yeah, so that's why we need to start with the. Um, descriptive part and uh, generally speaking a diagnostic as well as predictive as prescriptive analysis are based on the complex mathematics statistical and machine learning techniques that are used historical data to make predictions or forecast about the future events or outcomes but how we may we may use of the descriptive uh, analytics we will need to start with their data exploration with their business intelligence and visualization sometimes these all components are separated sometimes they are grouped in the single bi term and if when we're speaking about the bi uh, itself it refers to the processes and technologies used by an organization to store collect and analyze the data that are produced created or acquired by an an organization. And uh, the main purpose of the BI is to provide business insights and support data-driven decision-making. So a uh, business intelligence programs and processes are usually developed to augment the efficiency of processing and visualizing, visualizing data sets. And uh, okay, we know the purpose and we need to understand how they're actually implemented to understand how to test them. And here you can see that and the general flow, uh, flow of the BI process is the following. We have some data sources, which must be somehow filtered and organized in the, some structures format, and uh, which can be later uh, demonstrated and analyzed by their like business users. So uh, we have here, uh, in fact, data sources. We have here the some data processing pipeline, data warehouse, and report of, and analytics part. And uh, yeah, so. We know the components, and thus we know uh, how the BI system is developed. And now we will dive deeper uh, into the testing process itself, and uh, let's like understand the place of their data quality engineer here. And we will start with the importance of the data quality and who are uh, these guys <laughs> in this process. Uh, you may see a, in this slide a lot of uh, like problems that can cause poor data. 
quality for large businesses. But uh, to sum up, oh, I would say that generally only a third of the organization trust their data enough to make critical decisions based on it. And uh, comparing the researchers, uh, in some researchers, we're saying that, okay, uh, some um, specific, I would say, like, verticals uh, and businesses might cause uh, uh, the millions uh, of their year uh, of the dollars uh, in the financial losses and for like all uh, areas it might be up to the billions due to the unofficial business decisions uh, like their customers losing and so on and uh, okay we know the purpose we know why it's important but uh, what like is it like data quality guys uh, are different from the general testers? Uh, I won't take, say so, because uh, if we speak about the specifics of their data quality specialist, then we have a lot of common, in fact, with their general classic testing, only specialized uh, technical knowledge is needed for uh, for the data analysis, like the SQL and the Python. Uh, and also we need the, like knowledge how to perform this specific kind of testing like the BI, BI reporting tools, ADL testing uh, and also for some of the projects we will need their big data concepts, cloud solutions and ML basics uh, but yeah I would say that it's there the whole difference <laughs> in fact and uh, uh, so we know the guys uh, who are performing this testing. We uh, know the process and let's try to map these testing uh, activities to their companies that we had. And uh, we have these data sources, uh, uh, their ATL testing, BI report testing, and the test data management here. Uh, and this is the main areas that we need to inspect first. And let's start with the data source and target. And uh, implementing some amount of the data checks can be quite problematic because there are risks to miss some areas. And here we can have the data quality dimension concept, uh, main dimension, uh, dimensions you can see on the slide and however this classification is not universally agreed upon uh, we by nature like to classify things so data quality dimensions are a superficial concept introduced to bucket data quality issues with similar patterns and uh, conceptually you just need to define some kind of the universal approach for data validation that the entire QA team can use, and at the same time, you will be sure that the coverage is the same for each object. And if we move in next to the ATL process and the BI reporting, uh, it's more complex, I would say, and it's extremely problematic just to give the single guideline and to unify the testing process. Uh, there are even the common patterns for the testing, like of the migrations of their ATL processes, they might differ by speed, by their uh, like uh, time of the ingest and so on. But in general, uh, I would say that here we will have to measure activities. Uh, first of all, we need to check the loading mechanism, how to be filtering out the data, cleaning and reaching the data and so on. And the most important here is we need to generate some data on which this process can be checked because uh, we have simply the source. Uh, uh, so some data that can be, uh, must be transferred to the target and filtered by some logic. And if simply we know what must be filtered, we can inspect it easily. And uh, here, the major problem, <laughs> I think for the, uh, all the QPIs is coming, uh, is the uh, test data management process because it is uh, the creation of the non-production data sets will be will use for the testing and the quality of this data is really matters uh, because if application are tested against generic data many problems can arise once the application is put into the production and to avoid problems application must be tested rigorously against data that is similar as possible to the actual data uh, that will be used and uh, here, we inspected all areas and have the basic understanding how to perform data quality testing, but implementing all of this manually will have a lot of caveats. So also we need to think about their automation. And here we got this. And uh, 
when initially planning and automation and analyzing what can be used for testing, we will be faced with the, this gigantic uh, set of tools, but how to choose something specific and how to plan what we what, what to use on the project. Uh, we started with the following questions. Uh, so we first of all need to inspect how long our project will live uh, and do we have any specific project and uh, requirements for the testing tools, testing processes. Also, what programming language is mostly used by the team and what is our current project stack? And also, who will be involved in the testing process? Technical, non-technical team, who will use support this test, uh, test after like the project ends or after you? And uh, the size of their testing team we also need to inspect and uh, uh, speaking of the our real project <laughs> we have uh, the following ex um, um, answers yeah sorry uh, the uh, initially the timeline was like at least a year so yeah it makes sense to make some kind of the testing framework automation here and uh, also the requirements for the testing framework was inherited from the global project framework that used java selenium and cucumber uh, also the main language for the programmers was the java python and additionally uh, our stack is like or tightly coupled with the uh, Google Cloud Platform, SQL Server, Airflow, and the Patch Beam. And uh, the size of the testing team is like 14 members, but in fact, we have uh, additional stream that is responsible for the uh, UI part. And we have also three team members there. And uh, I would say that mostly our the testing team was uh, non-technical. And uh, let's have a brief overview of the uh, project itself. Uh, we have the HR uh, application in the HR domain that writes all its activities to the database. And data is uploaded via batch loads to the Google Cloud Platform. Next, the data is loaded into the BigQuery, our analytics uh, data warehouse. You're using the orchestrator. And data is from the BigQuery is combined into reports and also is cons consumed our, by our ML processes, ML models. And also ML models generate some uh, predictions, uh, some insights, and also placing it in the application and writing the, them back into the warehouse. And uh, I would say, the situation is pretty the same here. We have the source as the, our application and database of the application. We have their, our warehouse at the target. Um, we have the additional component here, the ML, which we will skip, I think, for now. And uh, we have the orchestration with all of this stuff, um, like how we're processing the data from the um, SQL server to their uh, final data warehouse in the BigQuery. So um, yeah, let's first of all make a short look into the framework and then uh, dive deeper into the details how to test properly the, each component. And uh, just a briefly framework overview, we have uh, the specific fun functionality for the framework on the project and it's uh, built on the following technical stack that we briefly covered. It's their GCP connectors to the Google Cloud Platform services. We have the Selenium, their, uh, the Java, uh, and the Cucumber, which is used for the BDD approach because the majority of the testing teams all across the project are non-technical guys. Uh, that's why BDD approach will leverage, like I, I would say, uh, it will be uh, much more, uh, um, it will speed up, in fact, just the testing process because you can just simply write the scenarios with no like uh, code, uh, without knowing code, you can just reuse their, this small pieces of the code and uh, just write, uh, any team member can write tests, automation tests, and it's pretty cool. And uh, what we have here, um, by using this framework, we're uh, just, simply covering all the areas that we discussed before. And the first area is their data quality dimensions. And this area is implemented as follows. We have here the connector. Um, inside the framework, uh, these connectors are used to access objects in the database and in the BigQuery, and just um, simply apply unified checks for them. And uh, because the number of the pro objects is extremely large, and there are several people in the team, uh, 
uh, we might face the problem when each person can write different tests. And so a single test template was made for each dimension in order to guarantee the same coverage of each object by all team members. Uh, we also have some additional like extra uh, dimensions like the for the consistency checks which might might which can be unified and might vary but the main process for the majority of the dimensions are covered by these unified check samples and in fact uh, addish, addish, um, initially we uh, uh, started with just comparing the tables uh, between source and target, and uh, this was a good approach until we needed to include all our tests into the centralized run, into the run of the of like uh, when whole team across the project running the tests. We also need to include our test in this into this process and um, here is the pitfall of just comparing the tables because uh, to do it uh, you need to make sure that uh, all of this um, objects are in sync and uh, you need to do it uh, after the fresh ingest I would say and uh, you might uh, in the global centralized run, you don't have an option, first of all, to uh, run the ingest process and only then to verify the objects uh, because it would take a lot of time, like up to three hours or four hours, just to wait for your part of the uh, pipeline to, to finish. So we decided to uh, separate these checks and make them more like atomic checks and uh, include this into the centralized run and to track all of these changes we just implemented the tr simple traceability metrics for all types of the checks and uh, we also have the integration uh, of the our uh, Jira with their test rail so uh, we can easily track any uh, case uh, here and any dimension and it's pretty pretty easy to extend this area. But uh, however, this approach has the following pros and cons. Uh, we speak about the pros, I think, and uh, mainly they're related to their, um, like you will have the same test level, uh, test detail level, because uh, we have their, some kind of the unified approach that any team member can follow and uh, they are also like out of the box because any team member can reuse this pattern and just apply the checks it's really speed ups their uh, addition of the new checks and by these connectors in fact we can write any sql uh, using this standard sql syntax any case yeah uh, but uh, also we have the following cons here uh any case uh even if we implement a lot of this uh, like small checks we might face the pesticide paradox when we just implemented a lot of checks uh they covered initial issues in the data but then they might be always just showing that okay everything is fine but uh, uh you need uh, to somehow provide more maybe complex test data to verify that okay uh to change maybe somehow their um initial like final output because if you just run this all, all checks on the same data you will always uh will say that okay everything is fine but uh that might be not not always there the case and uh it also this like part uh requires uh, some initial time for the implementation and uh in fact because we're using their um like our general project framework uh if we have any issues in the framework itself uh it will affect all our test runs and we won't be able to uh run our tests and here we go into the main part i would say the most difficult one to, with the uh, test data uh test data management because uh it's like the baseline for the etl testing and for their um, so sometimes even for the reports uh because uh without the test data you won't be able to uh, like verify the complex uh, scenarios and uh it is implemented as follows. First of all, we have a meta store that stores the uh, main data for all environments uh, like regression, uh, development environments, uh, integration environments, and UAT and pods, even uh, with all the attributes necessary for the data generation. And also, we have the specific Jupyter notebooks, which are using this meta store. Uh, they are generated by some 
business logic uh, files uh, that we will upload into the application. And uh, if everything is like well, went well, uh, then the other notebook in the process will uh, will be launched and it will update the meta store that okay we received all your generated data into their application everything seems fine uh, and uh, now your effective date of their uh, your generated data is the follows yep and uh, the generation itself um, the automation process also in place uh, we just have simply junkies jobs uh, just to uh, run these notebooks we just need to add some parameters and that's it uh, every, the data will be into place all data is stored in some specific buckets you just need to go there file, take this data upload this in any environment that you want and you will have this data there uh, however um, also, uh, if we're taking uh, talking uh, talking about the pros and cons of this approach, uh, the meta store, uh, in fact, makes easier the test data management process because you can track all attributes. You can make specific cases for like each particular I will I would say case, yeah, maybe based on their attributes of some entities, and. Uh, it much easier to verify this complex, uh, to generate this complex scenarios. And uh, you can control the status of data on each environment of the, this generated data. And uh, this process can be easily expanded. But uh, also, I think the cons here is the same. It requires some time for the implementation. And some, uh, some parts uh, of, of this work Pretty require manual work. You won't be able to somehow automate the initial data analysis, initial data profiling to understand these business patterns. Because if you just simply generate something, uh, it won't work. You need to inspect the I would say production data just to understand uh, uh, what it, what are the cases that you need to generate. What is the logic? How you need to uh, use it in your data. Yeah, and only after this you will be able to um, like run these notebooks. I would say, and uh, also the worst part here is the meta store is your single point is our single point of failure. If meta store is somehow deleted, uh, the whole process will fail. So we just simply backup in there in every run just to make sure that in case of any failure we will be able to restore the data and restore the meta store. And uh, the last two parts uh, is the ETL process and the, uh, our reports. So uh, if we speak about the uh, testing ETL, it's implemented as our also slightly the same with the uh, data quality dimension. We have here the connectors, we have here the uh, description of the environments and integration, and we have itself as the test data that we previously discussed. And uh, uh, these connectors uh, can interact with the GCP services, and uh, in fact, we can track the status of each particular servers. Is everything is fine? It just completed successfully. Is the job is completed uh, or in the service fine? Yeah. Uh, also, if we're speaking about the environment, here is we have the same. Uh, uh, I would say setup. Yeah, for each environment for our framework, we have the specific amount of the access rights, a specific amount of the permissions and the resources that our rep um, test framework can use. And uh, we simply just in some pipelines using their, uh, our test data to make sure that uh, different cases are covered in pipeline. And uh, simply that's it <laughs> regarding the ETL process. And uh, if we speak about the pros and cons here, uh, we also have the unified unified process. Uh, we have the multiple scenarios here because uh, in the single run you can you, you just need the complex data and uh, you can easily load this in the in the process and verify that okay part of this data was filtered part of this data was converted in the format that you desire, for example. And uh, it can be easily verified on each environment because your framework can access each of this and you have the same uh, um, like services on each of the environment and uh, 
but by the fact that you are using the test data uh, and you have the complex generation process, uh, you can expand any scenario, uh, easily scale it by using the test data. But uh, in fact, here is also we have, if we're speaking about the test data, here we have the major pitfall, the most significant cons as I see here. Uh, the value of this test is highly dependent on the test data. And uh, if we have just a, like garbage data or uh, something that is not suitable for the production, it will be just simply um, like false positive check. We're just uh, saying that everything is fine, production will be fine, but <laughs> no, it won't be a, a, an option here. And uh, also, as any other framework, it requires time uh, for environments integration, uh, for creation of all resources. And uh, um, also, there problem here that if you test in their whole pipeline, any step of the pipeline, if it fail, uh, the all test scenario, all subsequent scenarios can fail. And uh, I would say this is the major issues of this ATL process testing. And uh, the last one is the our report validation. Uh, we also have here the Selenium in the framework that is used for the UI testing for each environment. Um, there we have the profiles and resources, which we uh, also with with which uh, framework can uh, like interact, and uh, he, the framework knows to which uh, application he need to connect, uh, how to verify it, how to access their data warehouse to make sure that uh, like what we see on the UI is the same in their um, warehouse. And uh, through the data generation, we are making sure that uh, all our reports have the data and we can like test the filters that we have in the reports and we can test uh, like any, I would say, dashboards, additional, uh, additional dashboards that we uh, can uh, implement above these reports. So, yeah, uh, but let's talk about the cons here. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, we previously sp spoke about their uh, behavior during development and BDD scenarios, and uh, any non-technical team member can implement it, and we're using it in our like UI tests. Um, also, the verification can be done quickly on any, any environment because we have the profiles for each environment. We just simply change it, run the same test, everything is fine. And uh, But stability, is highly dependent on the quality of the locators and uh, the quality of their like uh, the reports. I would say uh, also requires the time for the implementation. And reports are in fact data dependent, and uh, without their uh, single like test the data management approach, uh, you won't guarantee that all your tests uh, UI tests won't be like. Um, false positive or like false negatives, uh, because you might run a uh, test for some filters, but you in fact don't have their uh, underlying data. Uh, that's why you don't have the data for some filter. Uh, but it doesn't mean that uh, you have the problems we report. It does. It only mean that you don't have the uh, uh, data for this report. Uh, it's the issue from the data side. And uh, okay. We have the process here. Uh, we know how it's implemented for the testing, but uh, what are the benefits for us and for the project itself? For us, uh, the test coverage, I would say, is significantly increased in the past releases, uh, just because the, this uh, data quality dimension uh, concept is very easy to, to implement by all team members. Uh, and also uh, like implementation of this test data management process also like unblock us in uh, like many of our ETL pipelines and verification of the uh, UI reports. And uh, for the business itself, uh, I would say that uh, when we started initially, uh, our analytics products and like the ML stuff was used only by their uh, like free percent of the end users uh, that used um, the application of the customer. Uh, but uh, as a result, after two years uh, and uh, like maybe three models implemented, uh, now we have this adoption rate by 
even forty-five percent. So each second uh, client is using our products, and we're pretty happy with it. I would say. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for now. So let's jump straight to the Q and A. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Anton, for for your speech. And let's jump into our questions. Uh, how do you ensure that the test data used in the data quality testing process is representative of the real world? Um, yeah, a, a tough question, I would say, uh, because um, this is mainly a blocker for the test data process. And uh, first of all, you can't just generate there just something. Yeah, uh, you need to start with the analysis. And uh, how we doing this? We are, first of all know there our application, so we have the domain expertise. This uh, is the first major block I would say here. The second one, we need to make sure that we have some data samples based on their data from the UATs or or production, just to make sure that okay, uh, we know what we have there. Uh, and we, we not just generated some random stuff, but uh, we are like really using some samples of the real data. And uh, by making this analysis and data profiling, we just uh, simply identify some patterns, understand how it works, and uh, just simply using it in our test data process. And also the last uh, point here uh, that we need to remember about the data refreshment. For example, if you perform some analysis a year ago, it doesn't seem that it uh, will remain the same because uh, you might have some dif different um, like activities or uh, different major changes in your application or in anything that you analyze. And you need to slightly tune, I would say, or your uh, uh, initial analysis after a year, uh, maybe performance once again, uh, just to make sure that your uh, vision of the data, of the production data is up to date, because the, the uh, easiest example is the COVID. Uh, the pattern how you, people worked uh, in uh, in 2019s uh, is differs a lot of how we are working right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that's that's interesting. The next question, uh, I assume it comes from uh, like a general test automation engineers who don't really know anything about data quality. Do you have any specific test frameworks, tools, and what tools you can recommend? Oh, yeah, um, I would say it depends because. Uh... Uh, it, it depends on uh, what you particularly have in the project uh, because in the, uh, we have a lot of test uh, tools and test libraries for the data verification. Uh, to name a few of them, it's like the great expectations uh, or the DQ tools or um, uh, uh, I, sorry, I remember the exact name of it, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and you can use them if you, uh, first of all, have the approval of the, from the clients and uh, you don't have maybe some uh, knowledge in their um, automatiz automatization, yeah? Um, to, I will recommend here just to um, base your further steps uh, based on yourself personally, yeah? If you know any programming language or you know there are some frameworks, just start with them. Just uh, no need to start with their, like, we cover everything, yeah, from the data perspective. Uh, just start with some simple check for a single object. And uh, if you implement this for a single object, you can do it for any other one, yeah? Uh, you can just simply start with the, um, with some connector to your database or with their uh, Python with the pandas, uh, just uh, inspecting a single object and just scale it later. So uh, it will be a basic recommendation because it's pretty difficult to say it depends on their uh, project stack. It depends on their uh, licenses that you have uh, on their client budget and so on. Yeah, generally it depends on your needs. 
yeah, yeah. And possibilities, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. also, like, the, the setup for a single person on the project will differ a lot for the setup uh, for the for QAs, for example, on the project. Yeah, and uh, I want to ask one one more question, uh, and it will be the lightest question for for your session. Uh, but it is tricky. Uh, where do I start? And are there any tips if I am the only one on the project and need to test the data quality? Oh, <laughs> 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 quite scary, I think. And uh, so, but there. Uh, we, we just can we can simply decompose the task uh, that we have there and uh, this is the same that we reviewed in the slides yeah that when you think that okay i need to start automation i open their list of the tools that i can use and whoa it's uh, like 50 frameworks or 50 tools uh, i don't know where to start i don't know what to do uh, but there main recommendation is will be the same as we covered in the second question i think uh because you just need to uh base your decision on yourself on your particular skills and on the customer ex expectations i will say uh, if you have any permissions to use any other libraries you can start with this uh, i will personally suggest just look uh look to, into their Python, maybe into the pandas, because uh, it will help you a lot in the future. Uh, because in the, I don't know maybe now a single project where you just simply query the database. A lot of projects now are using their uh, flat files, uh, a lot of other NoSQL databases and so on, many other stuff, yeah? And you just... Um, you can use SQL there, but uh, sometimes it will be easier just to analyze the data with the pandas, uh, pandas with the Python. So uh, the, your general flow is the same, just to understand what you have on your project, understand what you can do, and just simply start with a single check that you can perform. And when you perform the single check, you can scale it and uh, simply just uh, throw it into the Jenkins, <laughs> run this single job and receive the results. And oh. yeah, don't don't be scared, I will say. <laughs> yeah, OK. OK, thank you very much for your suggestions. Hope it will be useful for, for our audience. And thank you for our audience to stay with us. Uh, we have to jump to the next uh next topic next talk uh so thank you stay with us and see you soon bye yeah for, forgot <laughs> thank you bye bye